Welcome to my channel Living Library. I'm your host Dave. I'll be sharing knowledge about consciousness, spirituality and life. Stay tuned. How can I make the right decision on my choices shown? By Dev Kumar. Podcast. Everyone has free will to make their own decisions, and this is one of the universal laws. There are circumstances in life where you have multiple choices or paths, and you are in that moment to decide on those choices. You make choices based on either 1. Logical or rational 2. Random selection 3. Others' opinions or they make decisions for you 4. Following similar footsteps that others have taken etc. The choices and decisions that you make above may either be led by your ego driving you to decide based on logic. Alternatively, through the confusion, you are scratching your chin to figure out the best choice to make. Lastly, you could have given up your power to others so that they may decide for you. How to make a perfect choice 1. When you are in complete unification with your inner being and have full clarity, then choices don't exist in regard to where you are at the present moment. You are just flowing naturally at the moment and taking the path without the option of choices. Ultimately this brings great excitement or passion within you. Trust the feeling or internal guidance coming from your heart rather than the rational mind. Since your higher self is communicating through your heart with emotions, it knows what's best for you at that particular moment. 2. Suppose you are walking on a path in the park and you come across three diversions. One of the pathways is leading you in the right direction, the rest are not since it is blocked by bushes. In order to choose the right pathway, you need to trust the inner guidance coming from your heart through feeling, known as your gut feeling. The higher self knows the best way and it can see all the options on where each path leads to. So, it tries to communicate through your heart and is noticeable by feelings. In this example, your higher self is standing on top of the mountain. It has a complete perspective of all the views compared to your physical self that limited view. 3. If you are in a situation and you can't make a decision, then talk to your heart and check the inner guidance coming from your heart. It can concur or sometimes can direct you in the right direction. Like, tells you to take something or go somewhere before deciding. 4. Listen to your inner guidance. Trust it, make a decision, and finally apply that decision. What do we learn from it? 1. Nobody chooses you other than yourself. If someone is making choices for you, then you are giving the power to them. Take it back. 2. If you are always uncertain of your choices, then you are not trusting yourself. 3. Trust your inner guidance coming through your heart rather than logically figuring out the choices that your ego mind is telling you. 4. Love, trust, and kindness bring a state of confusion to rest. 5. When you are deciding without choices, then you are in a natural state and completely aligned with your inner being. All you are doing is just following your higher self. Let me give you a real example that happened to one of my friend's family. The choices and decision they made changed their life forever. For example, fear is natural in anybody. The key is to keep your belief larger than your fear. Over the years, I have noticed that people with strong beliefs tend to fare much better in their trials. For example, I knew of a friend who, at the young age of 10, found out her father got diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and was given 10 months to live. Soon after diagnosis, her mother fell pregnant with a baby girl. At this point, you have someone who had every intention of building a family and then they are told they're going to die with only a 5% survival rate. There are two paths here. One is giving up and letting the doctors be right, having no control over your life. Or two, have hope. The positive belief is that tomorrow will be a better day, and you should keep fighting to be there for your family and yourself. 
the transformation in the family was extraordinary. The mother told the father that, in no uncertain terms, was he going to die. He was not allowed to give up on them and their family. They would battle cancer together and do what they could one day at a time. He was going to win this battle for their unborn child and their family. The father changed his lifestyle and thought process completely. It was a choice he made, a belief so strong it was life-altering in its conviction if he made these changes he would survive. He changed his diet, he walked every day on the beach, around their small town, and greeted everyone with a smile and a polite good day no matter how much pain he was in. He spent time with his family and diligently went to his chemo sessions. Sometimes his wife, daughters, or uncle would go with him. Whenever he came out of his chemo sessions, they were there smiling and happy to see him again. The emotional toll on the family itself exceeded the comprehension of the father. You see, it wasn't only him fighting cancer to be with his family. It was also his entire family fighting to keep him around for longer. They lived and breathed positivity. A year or so later, his cancer progressed. Chemo did not work as well as they had hoped, so they tried radiation. Did they give up hope? No, they banded together stronger. Yes, there were tears of sadness and lots of hugs and love when the news came, but this made them all the more determined. They made t-shirts with radiation signs on them for every family member and had a big family gathering before his first session of radiation. To the family, there was hope. He was still standing there with them, noticeably lighter in body but not in spirit. After radiation, the family went through many more hardships, financially and emotionally. His one kidney was riddled entirely with cancer. He said it felt like he walked around with a lump of stone within him. The doctor wanted to operate, but the father said no. Why? Because every person he had sat with going through chemo, who had gone under the knife, had not recovered. For some reason, when they were cut open, it seemed their cancer would spread. Believing that the father did not want to be cut open but would rather weather the storm. Note, this is an opinion of what was best for himself. One day the father was finally given the recession talk by his doctor. His cancer had finally stopped spreading. The damage report was in, a tumor around his heart that was 9 cm by 13 cm had disappeared, the second spread of lymphatic cancer in his lymph nodes cleared up, and one kidney was no longer functional. He was part of that winning 5%. His belief in staying with his family, combined with his family's positivity, helped steer the course to a better day. The father now calls the day that the doctor told him the cancer was in recession on his second birthday. The extra decade with his family, that they've had so far, was viewed as a gift. Their L understanding that few others who had the same diagnoses were that lucky. Thankfully, there was hope. The point is that cleansing, belief, and hope had to go hand in hand. Now, this doesn't mean a belief in religion or an idea in something. It is merely a conviction in something that you hold great value in a high positive vibration. He believed he would beat it with the help and support of his family and his inner unfailing conviction. Every year, the father would go back to the oncology center and the doctor who had helped him through that tough time. He would take flowers and chocolates for the staff that worked there and pop in for a cup of tea with them. Years later, one of his daughters asked why he kept doing that if it was such a hard time in his life. Why did he want to go back to the place he was sick in? His response, those doctors and nurses fought hard to keep positive for us in our greatest challenge. Most people who sit in those chairs in the chemo room don't make it. By going back, I say thank you for their hope in me, and their help when I was sick. I hope that I can be the positive moment they need to keep going, 
doing the great work they do, and reminding them that some people do make it. Everyone gets down now and again. Taking a few minutes to remind them of some battles you win is important, even against all odds. Sometimes in life, you don't understand the value of a presence until it's gone. By Dev Kumar